So today I'm going to talk about singularity and uh, the focus of today will be practical. I've given some previous talks and uh, it was more technical uh, and uh, based on usage, especially in the last year, uh, I wanted to present some practical aspects. So I have some uh, introductory slides and slides that explain some things, but then I'm going to show you, I'm going to demonstrate singularity in action. So uh, I am based out of the University of Windsor. I'm part of SharkNet. And SharkNet is part of Compute Ontario, which is part of Compute Canada. So if you're anywhere in Canada and making use of uh, Compute Canada services, uh, if there's any further questions you might have that don't get answered in this presentation, then uh, by all means, please do submit a ticket and ask your questions and then we'll see about how we can help you. Well, without further ado, let's move ahead. Okay, so what is Singularity? Well, Singularity is container a container software uh, and it originally was created by Berkeley Labs and now is developed by scilabs.io. So if you do a Google, you'll often get the Berkeley Lab website, but at the top it says to go to the scilabs.io website. Uh, presumably you're interested in the most recent versions. And uh, since uh, just before version three, scilabs.io has been uh, responsible for it. Uh, basically for multi-user clusters, especially like the clusters on Compute Canada, Singularity is a secure way to use containers. Um, Docker, one of the most popular container formats uh, out there that people are using, is not secure for multi-user clusters. There's all kinds of little issues that can pose uh, security issues and things like that. Uh, Sing Singularity was designed from the start to be secure and appropriate for uh, especially high performance computing and other types of compute clusters, uh, especially multi-user ones. Uh, now, a container allows a user to have full control of your environment. If you're using our systems, it's set up the way it's set up and you can't change many aspects of that. If you need to have like an Ubuntu setup uh, or some other kind of setup that's very custom to you, uh, one way to do that is to use a container. It's probably the most flexible option of, available. Um, and uh, commonly containers are used to package scientific software, actually any software, and deploy that to uh, different systems and use it. Uh, and uh, it's not just uh, the traditional scientific software, it's any software, including like uh, complicated to set up bioinformatics software and things like this. So containers can be really handy because you can have the same environment on each computer you're using, including our clusters. And that might help some of your scripting and things like that. Uh, now, Singularity or containers that they provide operating system level virtualization. And important to understand is uh, this is a container is not a virtual machine. Uh, there's almost no overhead to a container. When you allocate memory in the container, it allocates memory in the operating system. When you do something in the container, it pretty much does it in the operating system. There's a very, very thin layer there. Uh, that has a, some overhead, but there's almost none in most cases. Uh, and that's good because virtual machines have a lot of overhead, uh, can be quite significant. Uh, so the other thing is containers can only use the same operating system. So some variation of the operating system that the computer you're using boots. So our clusters all have Linux installed. This means whatever you put in your container has to be compatible with Linux. It can be a different Linux distribution or whatever, but it's got to be Linux. Okay, so uh, this basically says what I just said. You know, virtual machines, they provide uh, a virtualized interface to real hardware. Now, if you're running a something gets called a virtual machine and it's running something that's different than the hardware you're on, I don't know, it's emulating an ARM or a Raspberry Pi or whatever, and you're on an Intel chip, 
that is called an emulator, not a virtual machine. Uh, virtual machines uh, don't change the underlying hardware. Uh, they use the underlying hardware, but they virtualize, like you can run different operating systems, Windows and Linux and uh, other operating systems on your computer, for example. Uh, most commonly used by uh, users on their own systems are uh, programs like VirtualBox. And VirtualBox is a virtual machine. But when you allocate memory in the virtual machine, uh, you discover when you set up that machine, you have to say, oh, I need two gigs of RAM. And two gigs of RAM in your computer then is dedicated to that machine. Nothing else can use it. Whereas a container doesn't do that. You don't say I need two gigs of RAM. The container just uses the same memory allocation routines uh, as all other programs on, that are running on that computer. So uh, big difference. And the virtual machines e easily can have uh, a certain small percentage amount of overhead, one to 5%, maybe more on some computers, depending on a variety of factors. So uh, the containers are much more lean and far less overhead. Uh, virtual machines have startup time because they're emulating uh, many things uh, and uh, doing many tricks to pull off what they do. Uh, containers don't. Containers rely on the kernel of the operating system that booted the computer and uh, just forward everything to that kernel and everything works that way. Okay. So Docker is another popular container technology. Uh, there is, uh, some of you have, if, if you use Linux containers, and uh, then uh, you might have uh, heard of LXC or LXD containers. If you've used those, those are containers as well. Uh, and you can also convert those into singularity containers. Uh, for this presentation, I'm going to talk mostly about pulling containers from Docker, since that's what nearly everyone is doing these days. So Singularity, if you need to install it, I have this slide for completeness. Uh, you can install Singularity on your own computer if and only if you're running Linux. So either you're running Linux on your computer or you're running it in a virtual machine. Uh, I've not tried installing Singularity in Windows subsystem for Linux yet. I imagine it would work, but uh, it might not. If it doesn't, then you'll have to install a virtual machine such as VirtualBox and then uh, and put Linux in it and then install Singularity. Uh, to load Singularity on our clusters, you just run module load Singularity and it loads. The latest version available on that cluster will load when you do that. Uh, one quick note, if you are using MPI, so you have an MPI program inside your container, so what's inside your container, if that is an MPI program, you need to load outside your container before you do anything. So module load singularity, but also do a module load and load version three or higher of MPI. Uh, run the newest one that you can, uh, but version three or higher. Version two uh, is extremely finicky. There's exactly, I think, one version that works. Sometimes uh, you want version three or higher. And then when you do your job, uh, your Slurm job scripts, uh, don't use MPI run or MPI exec directly. Use srun instead of that. Uh, some people put MPI exec uh, explicitly in their sbatch scripts. Uh, don't do that. You're going to have issues. Uh, you want to use the srun wrapper to, do, uh, to run the singularity jobs. If you're not using MPI, you don't need to worry about it. Uh, if you're only using MPI on that node and nothing else, not across nodes, it's just a whole node job you're doing or something, then you don't have to worry. If you're not using a cross node, you can you, you don't even have to worry about loading MPI. But in general, load MPI if you're using it inside the container to avoid issues. Okay, now, so you do module load singularity, and I'll be doing a demo in a sec. But you do module load singularity, and you can load and say, well, what can I do? Well, before you can do anything, you need to have what's called an image. Basically, if you can imagine your uh, hard drive, and if you were to take everything on your hard drive and put it into a file and call that an image, that's what an image is. So it's a file system directory tree containing everything you need to run 
the programs you put inside of it. The only things you don't need uh, are the operating system kernel and bootloader software. Now, if they happen to be in your image anyways, who cares? They're not gonna pose a problem, but they won't be used to run the program since that comes from the system that booted. Wherever you're running your Singularity program booted something, that's where the kernel comes from. Okay, so uh, you have to run a variation of Linux. So you can't use uh, like FreeBSD or Windows or uh, Mac things or anything like that. You have to run a variation of Linux inside your container. Now you can create your image from scratch, uh, but that's a lot of work. Um, most fortunately, you don't have to do that most of the time. And uh, uh, there are plenty of images on the web. Uh, there are images available in Docker Hub, uh, some through Singularity Hub. Docker Hub by far is the number one use. Uh, Scilabs uh, has started a library on their website uh, as well. Uh, you can pull images from uh, private repositories as well, um, including your own Docker repositories. There, You can do that. The Docker URL you pass to Singularity can explicitly give a private repository. Um, Singularity supports three formats. They're around for historical reasons. Uh, pretty much you should be using the .sif file format for version three or higher. Uh, and those, the SIF file format is compatible with uh, increasingly standardized uh, container image formats used for container technologies. So if you happen to be using more than one container technology uh, at your location or with people you interact with, uh, using the newest format is wise. That contains metadata uh, so that tools can process the image. And it also offers the most flexibility. All of these file formats are read only. If you want to do read write, that read and write to your container image, then uh, you have to build it with a directory. Uh, Singularity calls that a sandbox image. And uh, you can also uh, have a directory with a bunch of stuff in and use it read only. Uh, and a good example would be like if you had an LXC container, that's a Linux container. Uh, technology thing, and there's a rootfs directory. If you used LXC, you know about that because it's somewhere in your hard drive. You can literally just specify that directory and it will run the contents directly from that container. And then there's also a thing like a Docker file. It's a script called a singularity recipe or definition file. Okay. Now, we want this to be practical. So, how can you use things? Well, a lot of people building singularity images or need to do something, basically want something like CentOS, which is the Linux that our clusters run, or they want Debian Linux, or they want Ubuntu Linux. Frankly, anything that's up on Docker Hub, you can use. Uh, and how would you do that? Well, uh, with CentOS here, you can see we have singularity, uh, oops, my apologies, singularity build. So you put singularity build, and then you give the name of the SIF file, you make up whatever name you want. Uh, and then you can say Docker and specify what you want with Docker. So that first line here, you see CentOS colon seven, seven is the version. Uh, you say, how do I know what version's available? On Docker Hub, you can actually search for all the different versions and all that. And if you just put colon latest, it'll give you the latest version. So this is how you would do that. I'm gonna demonstrate this to you in a moment, but uh, you can pull in different images that others have provided. This means you don't have to build it from scratch. That's a very big deal. Um, and uh, the bottom there, the unique one, the sandbox directory, that's to use a directory so you can do read write things. So uh, the difference is in singularity with the build command is if you put a dash s and then give a directory name, that directory does not have to exist, it'll complain if it does. Um, and uh, it will put the whole image inside of a directory instead of in one file. Uh, that can be very handy because if you need to add something to the image or adjust anything in the image, you need to put it into a directory. I'm gonna focus on making the SIF file in this talk, 
but if you need to add to an image, uh, I'll mention some pointers on that, but please submit a ticket and ask how to go about doing that and we can guide you through it and or help you more directly on that. Uh, importantly, to make a sandbox directory, you have to pass in the dash s option to the build command. So if you need a directory and not one read-only file, uh, you need to pass the dash s option. Okay, now every short bit we get a question. How do I build a singularity image from a Docker file? Unfortunately, uh, well, for security reasons and a bunch of factors, we don't have Docker installed on our cluster. So you can't use Docker on our hardware. You have to put Docker on your own machine, uh, so or in a virtual machine on your own machine. And, uh, and then once Docker is there, you can run the Docker build command you see there, the name you want, you replace with whatever you want to uh, replace it with. Uh, you run that command in the same directory as the Docker file. Um, and then as soon as it's done, you can go docker save dash O and then whatever name you gave it, uh, probably you use the same name as wise, but you need to end in dot tar, it makes a tar ball. And then you specify the name you chose and that will save the image Docker just made uh, into a tarball. Then you take that tarball, you can upload it to the Compute Canada cluster if you don't have Singularity installed, or if you have Singularity in your own computer, then fine, you can use Singularity on your own computer. And you can go Singularity, build, give it a name.sif, and then you put docker dash archive colon slash slash and then the name of the tarball file if you're in the same directory and that will build the singularity image uh, for you so uh, very nicely that's how you build from a docker file but it re requires you, uh, you to have docker on your own computer and it might require depending on doc how docker is set up uh, you to have sudo or root permissions to be able to do it uh, that said uh, it is possible to build from a Docker file. If you have trouble uh, or there's issues or whatever, and it's for Compute Canada, then uh, feel free to submit a ticket asking for help to build from a Docker file. And uh, we'll either walk you through the steps or in some cases we'll uh, build it for you so that you don't have to mess around with Docker. Individual staff members have Docker installed on their own computers. When we're done, we have to upload it since we're all at home. Uh, these days due to COVID, uh, that is a little bit of an issue because uh, many singularity files wind up being anywhere from two to, uh, I've seen some as large as like 14 gigabytes. So uh, they, they're not the fastest to upload. Okay, very quickly using singularity, you can run a single command you can run many commands in an interactive session. And there is a way of running uh, servers and daemons if you need to in the background. And nicely, if your job gets killed or when your job ends, uh, those servers will get properly shut down. So that's really nice. So uh, all of those can be handled. And that third item that I mentioned is a big deal. Another reason why clusters use Singularity and not Docker, uh, the control, uh, is there and the ability to know the job if the job gets killed all parts of the job get killed because if there's programs left running uh that uh, then what happens is the whole uh your job still is running to the slurm scheduler and that can be a bad thing so it's nice to know that if uh, certain things die you can have your container instance die with it and all the things that you started up so it properly functions so if you have your image, you go singularity run. Uh, you can use exec, but in general, it's better to use run, especially if you're building from Docker images. Um, singularity run, uh, dash C is wise. Uh, you want to get rid of a lot of the environment and different setup on, our, on each cluster. You want to run the stuff uh, as it was set up inside the container. So dash C should be used. You put the name of your SIF file and then you put the command you want to run and it runs that command inside the container. And as soon as it's done, it leaves the container. 
So the overhead is so minuscule that doing this is not a big deal. You can run multiple commands this way. You just have to put uh, that singularity run dash C, your SIF file, and then whatever command you want. And that's how you run a command. If you want to do interactive stuff, then you go singularity shell dash C in the image, and then you can run all kinds of commands interactively, and you type exit to leave the container. The only other case is if you, for some reason you need to run daemons with your container, then you have to use singularity instance to start an instance. I called this one my job. Okay. And then you can run your commands, whether it's run or shell or whatever. And then this time, instead of saying, uh, you give the instance that you want to run, and then, uh, you know, you run your commands. And when you're done, you say stop. You stop the image from running. So most people don't have to run a daemon, uh, but occasionally you do. And the way you do it is singularity instance. So you basically singularity instance start your image. And when you're done, singularity instance stop. And you make sure you run those, and that will take care of shutting it down. Anything that is running, like a daemon or a server of some type that was running in the container, will, will be killed when you run the stop command. Okay, so before I do some uh, live demos uh, and actually run some commands, uh, on Compute Canada, we have a bunch of special directories, home, project, and scratch. My advice is when you run your jobs with Singularity uh, on Compute Canada, use the dash capital B option for home, project, and scratch. Uh, local scratch is available on all clusters except Niagara. So you can mount that one too. And if you just do it, then it'll look like uh, when you access something in your home directory or project directory or scratch directory, it'll you won't have to do anything special. If you don't do it, you won't be able to see those directories inside the container. The container hides the details of the file system. So you doing the special dash capital B bind mount lets you see those directories. Okay. Uh, occasionally, but not often, we get asked uh, if it's possible to mount the CVMFS software, Compute Canada stack inside the container, and the answer is yes. Uh, there's more than one way of doing it. Uh, and uh, if there's time permitting, I may show an example of that at the end. But if you want to do something like that, uh, please submit a ticket so uh, you can get the right guidance on how to do it properly, and we can talk about how you plan on using it. Uh, so uh, this way uh, you get the right instructions. There is some easy ways if you're only using the container on our cluster, but if you want to use your container on our cluster and at home or work or wherever, somewhere not in, in Compute Canada, there are some things that you can and cannot do, and uh, that will be the topic of discussion when you submit the ticket as well. Okay, so let me demonstrate some stuff. Actually, before I demonstrate some stuff, I'll just point out on, on the Compute Canada documentation wiki, so docs.computecanada.ca, we have documentation on Singularity. Okay, and if you find any errors, I'm going to be updating this uh, later this month. I'm the primary author of this page, so if you find any errors, please uh, bring those to uh, our attention and uh, so we can fix them. Uh, but this page documents how to use Singularity, but it's rather technical. And in the end, uh, there's not many commands you need to know how to use in Singularity, especially for how most users are using it. So I just wanted to point uh, that this Singularity page is available. Uh, but if you are stuck or if this page is too much, whatever, uh, submit a ticket and then we can help you. Okay. So, okay, on our cluster, the first thing we do is module load singularity. So I'm logged into Graham right here. So that's the first thing we do. And if we take the command that I gave, the very first one of how to build an image for CentOS 7, there we go, singularity build. And I'm gonna call this CentOS 7.sif actually, uh, I think I already have that in the directory, so I'm going to just put dash new. You can give it any name you want. Uh, and 
I'm going to build a version 7. So when I do this, hit enter, and then you'll see it download some stuff and then perform some work, and you'll get some error messages. Uh, if they only concern, if they say warnings, you probably don't have to worry about it, especially the warning for X attribute. X attribute refers to extended attributes. And unless you are on certain file systems, you can't use extended attributes. On our clusters, most of the file systems are networked file systems. So, and or file systems that don't support extended attributes. So you'll get warnings on that. You'll also see some warnings because you're not root. Uh, you can build most images without issue without being root. Uh, if it's an image that needs to have root and it can only be built with root, then uh, the, the option basically turns into you have to run this command on your own computer. Uh, for the most part, there are some cases uh, that can be dealt with on the cluster on a case by case basis. So one of the things you can see is that it doesn't build super quickly. And that's because the it depends on the speed of our cluster file systems at the time that you run the command. Uh, Singularity writes a whole bunch of temporary files and all that. So what I'm going to do, well, this makes the image, is I'm just going to copy that command, the same command. And on my computer, I'm running Linux. And I have Singularity installed. And so I'm going to run. Actually, let's just make a temporary directory here. And I'm just going to run this command on my computer. So you're going to see it run the same thing. Much, It'll be much quicker uh, than the cluster because I'm running everything locally. And this is on local hard drives. And some of the stuff is actually cached on my computer because I tested all these commands before uh, this presentation. So what happens is, as you can see, you get the same warnings, same thing, I'm not root. OK, and when it's done, it says creating the SIF file. So it does a bunch of processing first. When it's finished that, then it goes to make the SIF file. And the SIF file, because it's read only, it's compressed. Uh, so nicely, it compresses everything into that file. And uh, when it's done, then it says, this file has been made. And if we look at the directory listing, and I'm just going to put LH so we can see a nice number for the file size, this turned out to be 71 megabytes in size. Uh, now, it did, Singularity has a habit of using more than 71 megabytes of RAM. So uh, yeah, what you'll find is it's nice to have at least 8 gigs of RAM free when building most Singularity images. Some images won't build unless they have more than that. However, so far, I've been able to build uh, all the images uh, in about 12 gigs of RAM without issues that uh, every image that I've ever had to deal with. So now I have this file up here as well. Or if we put LH, there we go. And we can see it's 71 megs. OK, cool. Now you'll say, what's inside of this? Well. Uh, what's inside the image was CentOS 7, minimal install, or however it was provided on Docker Hub. But the CentOS images on Docker Hub are minimum installs. Nothing else is in there. So on its own, it's kind of useless. OK, so let's see how we can use stuff inside the container. OK, um, first of all, let me just show you that there is a file uh, on my computer that I know is not inside the container. Okay, so in my bin directory, I have UCC CVMFS. Uh, that's a script I wrote so I can use CVMFS, Compute Canada CVMFS setup on my home computer. So that is on my computer, but that is not inside this CentOS image. So if we do singularity, OK, and I do, uh, we'll do it interactively, singularity shell, OK, and we're going to run it, this here. Uh, so we all we do singularity shell dash C CentOS 7 new dot SIF. And if I hit enter, cool, OK. It gives us a singularity prompt. This is an, the shell command gives you an interactive prompt. 
So it's like being at the shell prompt, but it changes the prompt so you can tell you're inside of Singularity. Now, if I take this exact same command I ran, I'll copy and paste it, hit enter, I get an error. Cannot access user bin uccvmfs. This is the first important di distinction to know about using a container. It, when you use a container, the files that exist inside that container are the only files that exist. There are some asterisks on this, but basically they're the only files that exist in that container. If you want to use those files inside your container, then you have to tell Singularity to use them. So let me exit out of this container and let me add an option. If I put dash capital B, okay, and then I specify what I want to use inside the container with the dash capital B option, you can do files and directories. And then I rerun the shell command. So you have to put the, you can put one thing after the dash B. If you need multiple dash Bs, that's okay. But you put each one after the dash B with the same command basically, and you hit enter. Okay. Now if I rerun this command and that worked, I should be able to see that file. And I do. Okay, and so if I run cat to output that file, I see that output. And if I leave the container and I cat that file, I will see that they are the same. Okay, so the first thing to know about your containers is you need to put whatever you want in there, but everything it needs to use has to be inside the container completely inside the container. And if you want to pull anything from outside, like your home directory or anything like that, you are best to use this dash capital B bind mount option. Okay, so the same applies for uh, the cluster. I did that on my local machine because it's easier to show, uh, but the same commands could apply. So singularity, we go shell dash C. Okay, and we can do CentOS 7 new. Okay, and hit enter. And we'll see the same kind of thing. Now, I didn't use dash B for anything. So if I try, if I go to the root directory, cd slash, do an ls, nowhere in this list does cvmfs appear. Okay, home doesn't really have what home's in it. It's home inside the image. And there's no project directory. So you can't go into project. You can't go into CVMFS. You can't go into Scratch unless you, you know, you can only go into what's inside your container. Okay. So now you might say, okay, well, I want it to be access. I want to be able to access the stuff that's on the cluster, just like when I'm on the cluster. Well, then the trick is you go dash B slash home slash project and slash Scratch. You don't need to do local scratch, but if you do it, you have it. Okay, so you do this, and if you hit enter, okay, now you can go into project. That exists. I'm not going to do an LS because it's huge. Okay, you can go into your scratch directory. I'm My login is Prenny, so I'll do that, and I can go in there, and I can go touch a file. Okay, so I got a file there. I can exit out of this, and I can... Do, let's take a look at that file in Scratch. And there we go. That file exists. So the critical thing is when you go to run stuff uh, on our cluster or actually any computer, if you want to be able to access files on your normal computer uh, or on the cluster, you need to use this dash capital B bind mount. Uh, B, capital B is the shortcut form. There is a long form, but Less typing is better, so dash capital B. So by all means on the cluster, use it. It's a little tedious to type it in, uh, but usually you put it into a script or something so you don't have to keep typing it. So that's the first item to note, okay, is you want to do that. Now, when you have Singularity, 
uh, you want to be able to run commands. Okay, so you run commands inside the container and outside the container. Um, let's create a little, uh, well, we'll do it from the command line first and then we'll put it into a little script. So let's say you want to run a command on the cluster. Okay. Now in this container, I only have CentOS and it's just basic setup and the operating system CentOS too. So there's not re any real difference, but I'm gonna show you how you run commands. You And we can uh, suppose other commands are inside the container. Okay, so we can do this. We can say run and then we can do this previous command I ran here. So if you have something you normally run in the cluster and you wanna do it from inside the container, as long as the software is installed inside the container, you can do it. So I'm going to run this ls-ld scratch printy t command that I just did up here on Graham. And now I'm going to run it. But this time, because all of this is put in front, this will run that command inside the container. So if I hit enter with this, OK, then uh, this will either work and output the same output or whatever, or you'll get an error, okay? Now, when you get an error like this, okay, fail to retrieve path or whatever, uh, how can that happen, okay? This is intentional here. How can this happen? Well, this directory uh, that I'm in matters right now, okay? Uh, it, it does matter. And the first mistake I have to see that I made with my command is first of all, look over your command, okay? And then say to yourself, did you miss something? In this case, I put all the dash Bs, but I forgot to put the SIF file I need. So I'm gonna put that in my command right here, point one. So when I do enter now on this, this part of the command, this long blah, blah, blah in front is the same thing you keep putting in front of all singularity commands to run your command. So you put that all in front and then the command you need to run inside, you put after it. And when you do that, now it'll run. You have to tell singularity which SIF file, or if you're running it from a directory, which directory to use. And that just did this, okay? and. So if you want to put this in your sbatch script, you have to write this whole line. And if it's an MPI program, you put srun in front of the whole thing. So you can get these long lines. So it's helpful to write these commands down when you figure them out and or make a script for them. So let's put this in a script. I'm going to copy the whole thing. Okay. And I'm going to go nano. Uh, we'll call this silly.sh. Okay, bin bash, because I'm writing a script, and I'm going to paste that line in the script. Okay, so now I've got to make it executable with chmod plus x. So now if I run the script, it's going to do what I want. Now, those who are fluent enough with submitting jobs in our cluster, you know that you would just add sbatch lines here. If I can spell sbatch, right? And put all the options you need on a variety of sbatch lines. Uh, and except for an MPI program, if it's an MPI program, you need to put srun in front like this. If it's not an MPI program, you don't need to worry about that. And the uh, and then you can use sbatch to submit your script. And nicely, this really long portion that you have to write uh, is easy to manage in a file. You can copy and paste it and stuff like that. Now, when you put commands in your sbatch script or any script, you want to use exec or run here. Don't use shell. Use exec or run. You're running exactly one command and that's it. And if you have a choice between exec and run, choose run. When in doubt, choose run. Exec does not do something that run does that's important when you build images. And when you build them from Docker, run might do more than uh, exec. Importantly, it might set up whatever the Docker image sets up. 
by default uh, to enable things to work. Okay, so now that is using the SIF file. You might say, oh, that's read only. You might initially say you thought it was okay. You downloaded it from Docker Hub. You built your SIF file and you can do some running some things, but you realize now you got to make some tweaks. You got to make some changes. I'm going to do this on my local machine, not on the cluster because my local file system is faster. And during this presentation, it's nicer to see it run more quickly. So I'm going to run singularity, the build command. And this time I'm going to put dash s, okay? And I want this into a directory called myder. You can make up any directory name you want there. Now you can put docker colon slash slash and put a docker thing, or you can specify uh, uh, another container, uh, or another uh, uh, what Singularity calls a sandbox directory or whatever. You can put whatever you want. So Singularity always has the target first, followed by where it comes from. So I want to build uh, from CentOS 7-new.sif. I want to build a directory with the same content. Okay, so I can do that by hitting enter. Okay. And generally speaking, you could ignore all the warnings. If things don't work, then you might want to uh, verify the warnings. And now I did this as my user, and you can do this on the cluster as well, uh, but you'll run into a little issue, and I'm gonna show you what that is. First of all, if I do an ls-l, you can see I have a directory called myder, okay? And the D at the front means it's a directory. If I go into my dir, take a look inside. Okay, that's nice. Interesting. Okay, well, for fun, let's come back up here and go singularity shell, because these files basically are the same. Singularity, see, CentOS 7-new Ceph. Okay, so I'll just run it here since we can have two, two windows visible. And if I go to the root directory and I do an ls, and if I look at the output, they're the same. Now, when you download from Docker Hub, uh, you might you hope you verify that you trust whatever you're downloading from Docker Hub or anywhere else is from. Now, I said CentOS uh, 7, minimal install, but obviously whoever built this image had something to do with con Anaconda post log or left a file there or whatever. Uh, Anaconda is not part of the minimal install of CentOS. So uh, there might be things you don't want in the container. So you might actually say, oh, I want to delete it. Well, I can't delete this. In, if you're using an SIF file, I can't delete it. Okay, if I try to delete that file, it says read-only file system. Okay, now down here, I bound mounted this directory. Okay, actually I didn't bind mount it. I'm not in that directory. Let's run singularity. And I'm gonna run it in two ways so you can see it. So first way I'm gonna run it is just like what I did up here. But this time I'm not going to specify CentOS 7-new.sif. I'm going to specify MITRE, okay? And when I run it, I get the singularity prompt. So I should be able to do the same commands, ls, see the same output, I do, great. And now I'll say, I don't want this anaconda file. Read only file system, but wait, this is a directory on my local computer. Moreover, this directory, if we look at it, has uh, permissions for me to write and read to it, uh, read from it. So why is this? Well, when you run the singularity shell command, anything it allows you to do inside the image uh, is done inside the image. But as soon as you run exit, it goes away. So if it did let me delete the file, it didn't in this case because I didn't pass a special option. But if it did let me delete the file or if it let me create a file or do things, as soon as I type exit, it throws it all away. It does it in memory, okay? 
So if you actually want to modify the image, then you need to put a dash W with your build or shell command uh, to, sorry, with the shell command or the run command if you want to uh, be able to modify it. Almost always it will be with the shell command. So if I go dash W, you can't do this with an SIF file, only with a directory setup. So the build dash S has to be done, get a directory, and then you can do the shell with the dash W specifying the directory. And now we can go to the root, do an LS, and then we can delete Anaconda. Now that will let us delete it. So if I do an LS, it's gone. And if I exit, now I'm out of that directory and I go into my dir and do an LS, Anaconda is gone. Okay, so if you want to write to, uh, you want to modify an image, what you have to do is you have to run the build command with dash s. I have that somewhere up here, right here. You have to add the dash s option, specify a directory, specify your uh, SIF file or the docker colon slash slash thing, whatever you want to do, and that will build your image. Okay, the dash s is for sandbox, it means make a directory. And once you do that, then you can run singularity shell with the dash W option, which means writable, specify the same directory name, and then you can go in there and do whatever you need to do. Uh, I'm not in that directory. So, so you can go in there and do what you need to do. Now, some people say, okay, I just installed Ubuntu, I just installed CentOS, I just installed whatever, so I should be able to go yum update and update stuff. Okay, look what it says. You must be root to perform this command. So if you want to take Ubuntu, Debian, CentOS, Fedora, any of the major Linux distributions and update it in install packages, you need to have root permissions you cannot have root permissions on our clusters. So uh, there are some things that can be done for specialized cases on some clusters. Uh, and you, those would come about through ticket requests and things like that. But otherwise, if you need to have root, uh, and generally the fastest way it, to get root is to have it with Singularity installed in Linux on your own computer, in a virtual machine if you have to. Uh, where you have root access, okay? Because now if I go singular, pseudo singularity shell, okay, hit enter, and I run yum update now, this will work. Okay, so it will do a yum update, and then will ask if I wanna do it, oh sure, okay? And I would be able to install packages, okay? The same is true for Debian, and Ubuntu and all of these systems. So uh, as long as you don't need to use the package manager in the Linux distribution, you won't need to have root. If you just have to edit a config file and change a setting, uh, that's fine. You can, you can change that file even on your Compute Canada account. But if you have to start using the package manager for that Linux distribution to install stuff, uh, then you will need to have root permissions. So I wanted to point that out uh, because it's an important point. People say, well, do I need to use sudo? And the answer is no, you don't need to use sudo uh, unless you want, unless you need to use the package manager. So Red Hat distributions, that's RPM, YUM, DNF. Uh, for Debian, that's apt or apt-get or dpackage. Um, and those are the main ones. But if you're using another distribution like Arch, it's Pac-Man, things like this. Uh, if you need to use the package manager, nearly all package managers have to run as root. You can't use them as a normal user. Okay. And that is part of what singularity is for security. Um, is that security uh, is it only runs things as you. So on the cluster here, I don't have any special permissions. When I run singularity, everything I run with it runs as me, my account. I don't get special root permissions or anything like that unless I invoke certain things I've arranged with like uh, other staff members in the system administrator or whatever, because I'm staff, I can do it. No, all users 
uh, can only use Singularity with normal permissions. So if it requires something your account cannot do on the cluster, then you'll it'll need to be done on some other machine or you'll have to talk to us, submit a ticket and say, I can't do this. Can you guys help me with it? Uh, and then we will address it. Sometimes we might do it. Other times it is possible to grant uh, that ability uh, and all this, but all of these are niche cases. Most people do not have to do this. Why? Most websites will say, download this Docker image, configure these config files, and then just use it. Great. If that's what it says, and the Docker use is pretty easy, it doesn't have a lot of options past the Docker, you're not going to have a problem. If it has a lot of options past the Docker, then you might need to submit a ticket and ask for help to translate the singularity options uh, sorry, Docker options into Singularity options to get it to run. If your software you're trying to make run is complicated or has a lot of configuration instructions, or if it's bioinformatics, you'll almost certainly need to submit a ticket to us uh, because some of them are quite challenging to get to work, even without Singularity, uh, and uh, we can help you with those. So that's how Singularity works. And in a very practical way, uh, that's how you use Singularity. Uh, what I want to just go over one more time here is if you are building from a Docker file. So a lot of tickets, people say, how do I build this from Docker? And I just showed you, and that com that's command like this. You just run a command like this, whatever the Docker uh, name colon version is put there and give it the name you want to give and you'll get that Docker image. And hopefully that's exactly what you need. Nothing else needs to be done. But sometimes you need to build it from a Docker file. Okay. And the only way to do that is basically to use your own computer. You would run this Docker build command. Docker has to be on your computer to do this. Uh, and Docker build, you build the image. And then you run this docker save command. Very importantly, docker save saves the image that was built. Uh, docker uh, has the notion of an image when it's running uh, and you can make changes. Docker save does not do that. You have to docker commit first and then run docker save. For those that meant, that meant something, great. If it doesn't mean anything to you, then your use of docker is probably to run the build command, okay? You give it a name and then you docker save it into a tarball, upload that tarball to Compute Canada, and then just run singularity build with docker archive slash and then the name of the tarball. And once you do that, then after that, you can use singularity shell and singularity run to run your container. I'll open it up to questions and uh, by all means there. And if, uh, if it's complicated, then perhaps some, we talk uh, afterwards about that.